January 10, 1982, Riverfront Stadium. For both the Cincinnati Bengals and the San Diego Chargers, this is the biggest game in franchise history. The winner of this game goes on to their first ever Super Bowl, where they will await the winner of the Dallas-San Francisco game that takes place later in the day. That game, famous for the catch, would go down in NFL history. And so would this game unfolding for the AFC Championship, because at kickoff, it was negative 9 degrees. But when you factor in the 27 mile an hour winds, you were left with a wind chill factor of negative 37 degrees Fahrenheit. And under the old wind chill formula, this game had a wind chill factor of negative 59 degrees. It was the coldest game in NFL history. There were over 13,000 fans who bought tickets for this game that did not show up. And I can't exactly blame them. For some perspective on how cold this game was, in the famous ice bowl that took place between Dallas and Green Bay back in 1967, the old wind chill factor was negative 48 degrees. This game was 11 degrees colder than that. And just for some perspective on how cold the ice bowl was, when referee Norm Shatner blew his whistle to start the game, it froze his lips, and when he tried removing the whistle from his lips, the skin ripped off, his lips began to bleed, and the blood simply froze to his lips. I blew my whistle to start the ball game, and I didn't really blow it, it was only a half a blow because it was a tweet, and that was the end of all whistles for the ball game. They all froze on us. So we just yelled, stay away, keep off them and everything. And this game taking place in Cincinnati was 11 degrees colder than that. So I've set the scene pretty well. It was obscenely cold. So when I show you this picture of a kicker lining up for a 50 yard field goal, you're probably wondering, there's no possible way this kick can go in, right? Can San Diego kicker Rolf Benershka possibly hit this kick? Well, there's only one way to find out. Play the clip. Field goal try if 50 yards by Benershka and it isn't even close. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Now before I break this down, I want to start off by saying that I'm trying something new on the channel with this Dumb Decisions series, where I take an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something that looked bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something that looked awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no possible way that this can work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. No idea how regularly this is going to be a thing, but we'll start with this one and see how it goes. So with that out of the way, let's look at this decision to kick a 50-yard field goal in negative 59 degree temperatures by starting off with the kicker himself, Rolf Benershka. He had been with San Diego since 1977, so this was his fifth year in the NFL. Up until that point, Benershka had gone 5 for 13 from 50 plus yards in his career, including the postseason. And that season, he was 2 for 6 from that range. One kick was in the opening week of the season against Cleveland, which was exactly 50 yards. And the other kick was a 52 yarder in mile high, where every kicker's distance improves dramatically. This man didn't have the strongest of legs. In the week before, the Chargers played in the epic in Miami against the Dolphins, which is widely regarded as one of the greatest postseason games of all time. It was a clear day where the temperature was 76 degrees. You could not ask for better weather for a football game. And in the first half of that game, Benershka lined up for a 55-yard field goal, and he missed it wide and short. So was it even possible for Benershka to make this 50-yard kick? Like, was there any chance whatsoever that this kick was going to split the uprights when Benershka walked out there? Well, in the first quarter of the game, Benershka lined up for a 37-yard field goal. And apparently, Bengals head coach Forrest Gregg told the workers at Riverfront Stadium to open the gate in the end zone before the kick, which led to even more wind blowing in Benershka's face. So here he was lining up for the kick from 37 yards out. And he missed it short. He didn't just miss it. He missed it short. So naturally, if your kicker misses a 37-yard field goal short, the odds that he'll be able to reach from 13 yards longer than that are not very good. Now, I did a lot of digging through this one, and I'm assuming that the Chargers didn't have an analytics department or computer folks, as Dave Gettleman would say, back in 1981. But I dug through the coldest games in NFL history up until that point. I looked at every single game played in the history of professional football played up until that point that took place in temperatures 
of 17 degrees or less. Then I plotted the distance of these field goals that were made. As you can see through this chart, you might notice that there is a disturbing lack of dots at 50 yards or more. And that's because no field goal had ever been made at that point at that distance. Either teams knew better than to let kickers try that, or these kicks missed the mark. In fact, in games played at one degree or below, I could only find one instance of a kicker even hitting anything over 40 yards. And that was a 42-yarder by Packers kicker Chester Marcole in a 1972 game against the Vikings. Want to see the coldest 50-plus yard kick ever made up until that point? Here it is. Cleveland had to settle for kicking, which Don Cockroft does very well. 50 yards if necessary. And at the half, it was the Cardinals 13, Browns 6. It comes from a 1968 game between the Cleveland Browns and the St. Louis Cardinals. It's a 50-yarder from Browns kicker Don Cockroft, who led the league in field goal percentage that season by hitting 75% of his kicks. Yes, it barely clears the uprights, but it still counts. The temperature at this game was 17.2 degrees, with a wind chill factor of zero. That was the coldest 50-plus yard kick ever made up until the freezer bowl. So what Rolf Benershka was about to do was try and match that. Again, the temperature at Brown's Cardinals was just over 17 degrees. This game was at negative 9 degrees. The wind chill factor of Brown's Cardinals, according to the old formula, was 0 degrees. This game was at negative 59 degrees. So the odds were not in his favor at all. It was impossible that day to kick anything whatsoever, even if it was a punt. The longest punt that day was 35 yards. Of the five punts attempted during the game, the average distance was 30.2 yards. Keep in mind that Bengals punter Pat McAnally was the best punter in the NFL that season. He was a pro bowler and a first team all pro, and averaged a league leading 45.4 yards per punt. In a game earlier that season against the Buffalo Bills, McAnally averaged close to 56 yards per punt. And yet, even on this day, he could not accomplish anything. He said that it was like kicking a rock. There was no compression in the football. When the best punter in football is saying that it's impossible to do anything, that gives you an idea of just how bad it was. Cold weather, it's uh, difficult to compress the ball. And, you know, you just hope that you get real good contact and you can follow through. Uh, you're just not going to kick the ball as far when it's cold. So what could San Diego have done instead of kicked a 50-yarder late in the third quarter that would have cut a two-possession game into a two-possession game? Well, they could have punted the ball, tried to pin Cincinnati deep, or they could have gone for it since it was fourth and manageable and they had three-time Pro Bowl quarterback Dan Fouts under center. But nope. They just had to try their luck from 50 yards out. And sure enough, Cincinnati took advantage of the good field position on the ensuing drive and scored a touchdown to essentially ice the game. No pun intended. So to recap everything, no kicker had ever made a kick of that distance in even remotely comparable conditions. Their kicker did not have a strong leg and could barely reach from 50 yards out on a good day. And earlier in the game, their kicker tried a field goal from 37 yards out and missed short. Kicking a football on that day was like kicking a rock. And even if the field goal was made, it would still be a two-possession game. Having said all of that, you can't exactly be surprised when this decision backfired. Talk about a dumb decision. Field goal try if 50 yards by Benerska and it isn't close. 